one time. What's up guys, welcome back to episode 3 of the poker vlog. As you can see, we get into a lot of big spots pre-flop. It's gonna be an interesting episode, and please remember to subscribe if you enjoy the video, it really helps me out. Let's get into it. Welcome back everyone to the first hand of the video. The majority of this session is five-handed, which is what it starts off here as. I'm in the cutoff, I have king-queen off suit, I open the action to $12. The button makes the call, and so does the big blind. The flop comes a good one, king-queen-5-2 hearts. The board smashes my range as well as my actual hand, so when the big blind checks, I decide to slow play and check as well. Now, the button bets $15. When the big blind makes the call, this is just a mandatory check raise spot, as I'm almost always good here apart from maybe pocket fives, considering the way they played pre-flop. I need to charge heart draws as well as straight draws, so I check raise to $50. The button gets out the way, so maybe he was taking a stab at it, and the big blind makes the call. Off to a turn, which comes the three of spades. A great card, pretty much a total brick. When the big blind checks, checking back just isn't an option considering the strength I showed on the flop, so I bet $60, quite small as I'm targeting all of his drawing hands on this street that may not be able to call a larger bet. He makes the call and we're off to a river which comes the jack of clubs, not the greatest card but definitely not the worst. Ace-10 and 9-10 make the straight, but the only plausible combinations of those hands that make sense for the big blind to hold on to after the flop and the turn are the ones with two hearts, as he would have folded these hands on the flop or turn otherwise. The only hands that beat me that make sense to me are these two straights, of which there are two combinations in the deck, and pocket fives of which there are three combinations left. Pocket jacks would raise pre-flop, not wanting to go three ways, the same with kings and queens. All other possible hands that technically could beat us wouldn't make the river, so realistically, I'm only putting on 5 total combinations of hands that beat us. When looking at the hands that don't beat us, that he can call with, there's many more than that. Logical ones include King Jack, of which there are 6 combinations left in the deck alone, already making this a spot where betting with 100% frequency is the optimal play. However, there's also so many other hands that he can call with, including some King X's, maybe even some Queen or Jack X's if he doesn't believe my story. Betting 3 streets, and especially check raising the flop, really polarizes my range, meaning I either have the best available hands, such as kings, queens, ace 10, or king queen like I do have, or nothing like a busted heart draw or a straight draw that missed. This line wouldn't really make sense for a one pair hand, such as a king x. If he's a good player, he'd know this and may make a hero call with a jack or queen pair, considering kicker issues shouldn't really be a problem, as I'm never gonna have a one pair hand here. With that being said, when he checks to me, I bet $130 into a pot of $273, leaving him with around 40 behind. This is a huge mistake, there's no reason to only bet 130 in my opinion. Especially with the line I've taken and polarizing my range, I should just be betting all of it, betting this small just looks so value orientated, and I don't like it at all. He could have just been drawing and all this analysis could have been for nothing. But he tanks for ages meaning we think he has a decent hand. It also means he probably doesn't have us beat, so that's good. And you know on this channel we love to give our opponents nicknames, so right now I'm going to dub this player the Tanker. $15 pot, $1000 pot, it doesn't matter to this player, he needs a sufficient 5 minutes of thinking time before he's ready to make any sort of decision. Unfortunately, after his standard thinking time, he mucks his cards, saying he made a great fold so he must have had something good, maybe even King Jack. This next one we pick up Ace Jack offsuit on the button. The cutoff limps and I decide to raise it up to $20. It folds around to the cutoff, who's actually Mr. Minrays, he was given that nickname last video if you want to go check it out. He's quite a loose cannon as you'll see later on throughout this video. Well, he limp shoves for $110. Usually, when an experienced player does this, they have aces or kings just a lot of the time, but just because it's this player, I have to make the call, so I do, hoping to be ahead. Mr. Minrays decides to dramatically exclaim his hand. <laughs> We're ahead! He has 5-6 of hearts, good for post-flop play maybe, but not the best in this situation. We're off to a flop which comes, ace, king, deuce, all clubs. It's a very safe flop, we've hit top pair. The turn comes, the three of diamonds, no four. The river comes, the three of hearts, we scoop this $230 pot to six high. A real premium now, we have queens under the gun. I open to $16, the cutoff makes the call and so does the big blind. The flop comes an absolute nightmare, it comes ace, king, ace. Just kidding, we flop the joint, it comes 6-6, six, six, queen, perfect. Once again, I have the whole board locked up with an absolute monster, so when the big blind checks, I check again, and unfortunately, so does the cutoff. The turn comes a nine of diamonds, it doesn't change anything on my end. 
I really want someone to start bluffing at this pot, so I check once again, hoping the cutoff bets. He does this time, thankfully, he puts in $22 and the big blind folds. There's no merit to raising here, if he's bluffing, it's just going to push him off it, and if he has a hand, he might fold if it's not that strong, so I just make the call. The river comes the seven of hearts. We still have the second nuts, bar, quad sixes, how do we get the most money in here? I'm out of position, but if he is bluffing, I need him to continue, and if he has something, he's probably going to bet anyway. I check, and our opponent bets 55. He has 95 left in his stack, this is a clear position to jam. I Hollywood for a minute or two, and announce that I'm all in. Our opponent now says something really surprising, and this really surprised me. He tells the table he has aces, pocket aces. Now that was not something I was expecting. He just called my open preflop and he's been coolered hard here, although he did let another person into the pot by not raising. He makes the call pretty quickly however, I flip over my queens and we take this 400 pot down. Onto a new hand, we pick up pocket nines in the big blind. Mr. Minrays opens it up to $15 in the small blind. A standard 3 bet in our position, however our opponent has the tendency to play radically as you saw earlier. We 3 bet to 45, it folds around to him and what do you know he bets 120 for a 4 bet. I think about this for a while but there's just a lot of better spots to call in or even raise. The way to counteract this player's actions is to only 3 bet him with premiums and a tighter range so that you can always call their 4 bet. Another way to counter this is just to call their 4 bet wider although this can be risky as he's a loose aggressive player meaning he'll play very wide pre-flop and then do his utmost to win the pot post-flop even if he doesn't connect at all. I end up on a fold, we decide to rabbit hunt and I flop a set, quite unfortunate. However, runner runner completes a 4 way straight using a 4 and to my surprise he flips over a 4 but nothing else, meaning there's no possible hand that we were behind. So maybe pocket 4s, ace 4 suited maybe, or maybe just 4 or 5 suited again because he's just crazy like that. Here's what you've been waiting for, we pick up pocket aces under the gun and decide to try a pretty sneaky strategy. A lot of raising has been going on so I decide to limp, inducing someone to raise so that I can re-raise them or maybe trap with my aces if there's only them left. This should be a really low frequency play in your strategy, especially short handed, it's better to raise with your stronger hands with a high frequency. Thankfully the button opens to 15 and what happens next is just beautiful. Our loose nemesis on our right in the big blind 3 bets to $45. There's no way I can just call here and give the button a great price to go 3 ways. I immediately called 4 bet to 125, hoping my quick action may look like a tilted move, considering I folded the best hand with my pocket knives to the big blind a few hands ago. Realistically though, I've only invested $4 into the pot by limping, there's no real reason for me to get out of line and my action probably looks insanely strong to the table. The button gets out of there and it's on to the big blind. Well now he tanks, and this player doesn't usually tank but this time it goes on forever. He's 650 deep and I haven't covered barely. I can see him going through the motions in his head and he mentions it's a shove or fold situation. He's seriously considering folding, but in the end he makes the call, we obviously snap call, this has ballooned into a $1350 pot pre-flop, wow. He flips over pocket queens, we flip over our aces and that's just a massive cooler once again. Off to a run out, the flop comes 3. Three, four, hold, nine, hold, and the river comes a three. We take down a $1,300 pot going all in pre-flop. Wow, that's a huge one. On to a more timid hand. We have ace eight offsuit in the big blind. It folds around to the small blind who opens to $15. I can definitely three bet here some of the time considering my hand strength in a blind v blind situation, but since I'm in position, I decide to flat and evaluate a flop. The flop comes king, 10, jack, rainbow. It's super connected. Any 10, jack, queen, or king is going to continue here. So when the small blind checks to me, I just check back, essentially giving up with my specific hand. The turn comes the 10 of clubs. I guess it's less likely for him to have a 10 now, but I'm still not really planning on fighting for this pot at all. Our opponent now checks for the second time. As I mentioned, this player is extremely aggressive, so him checking twice never really happens. Maybe he has a monster, or maybe he just has nothing. There's still no reason for me to bet, any hand that I'm ahead of is going to fold, and any hand I'm not will call. The river now comes the 10 of spades which is pretty interesting. When our opponent checks for the third time, I'm absolutely confident he does not have a piece of this board. The way I view it is this player, he would have 100% bet one of those streets with a piece of it such as a king or a jack or even a 10. Even with a small pocket pair, I'm confident he would bet this river, 
so I'm almost certain ace high is good. Therefore, I decide to value bet knowing a raise is super likely just based off this player. I commit to calling any size raise, even if he puts all in, and I bet $25, almost pot. And just as expected, he raises to $80. I couldn't snap call quick enough. And yes, he reveals four high, so we take a $200 pot out of nowhere. In the next hand, we're dealt pocket aces on the button. The cutoff limp, so with everyone pretty deep stacked, I make a standard open of 5x the big blind to $20. The small blind and the cutoff both make the call. The flop comes 8, 9, king, 2 diamonds. It's a pretty wet board texture, not great for aces, especially against two other opponents. This gets worse when the small blind donk leads for $30 to which the cutoff calls quickly. Looking back, I think I just should have raised in this spot. If I call, which is what I end up doing, I'll be subjected to a much larger pot against two opponents when one of them could have easily had me beat. The turn comes a six of clubs, not really that dangerous of a card, although some straight possibilities get there. The small blind once again leads out for $80. When the cutoff calls, although I think it's a terrible situation to be in, I think aces have to fold, it's just so likely one of them has a two pair, set or straight, even if they have a draw they should have a decent amount of outs, it's just not worth it. So I make the fold but we're gonna watch this one out. The river comes the six of hearts and the small blind shoves for $63. His line just seems super strong but I guess we'll find out. The cutoff snap calls, it's Mr. Minrays and he flips over the runner runner trips holding 6-3 of diamonds. The small blind flips over king jack in disgust, but it just shows the dynamics of this table and how thin people bet for value, as well as how wide people call down certain streets on occasion. Our fold on the turn was actually the wrong one in this scenario we were ahead, however I do believe it's a profitable call in the long run. After getting so many premium hands today, we're brought back to earth with 8-7 suited, still a very nice hand. We're down to 4 handed, so I opened to $15 under the gun. The small blind and big blind both make the call. The flop comes. Well, it comes what I was looking for. I flop the straight, although there are two diamonds out there, so it isn't absolutely perfect. It's pretty perfect. So when it checks to me, I need the action. So I bet really small to $15. I definitely should be going larger three ways, but oh well. Only the big blind makes the call. The turn comes the nine of clubs. Not as bad as it looks on first appearance, to be honest. Although yes, he could have some full houses. He could also have floated the top pair, now improved to trips, and he can get lots of value. When he checks to me, I bet 30 and he makes the call. The river comes the 8 of spades, now this is a bad card. There's a 4 liner out there, so I won't really get much value from anything. When it gets checked to me, you're supposed to throw in some smaller sizes on a 4 liner board. However, that's mostly when you don't have the straight and you have some marginal pairs. Considering I'm most likely good, I size up to $100, hoping to get a crying call. I get snapped off and yes, he rivered the straight, so we're quite unfortunate to get rivered there. We chop it up. The poker wizards reward us with a hand after being rivered, we pick up ace king offsuit on the button and open up action to $17. The small blind calls, and the big blind 3 bets to quite a large sizing of 100, leaving himself with 300 behind. I consider flatting, but since the small blind is in, and there will be little room to play post flop, I just rip it in for $400 total. The small blind quickly folds and outs onto the big blind. Our opponent is the one notorious for tanking. However, he disappoints this time, one in a million, quickly folding and saying he had ace jack. On to the last hand of the video, it's quite a complex one. We're blessed once again with pocket kings under the gun. I open to $15 and it folds to the same player who just folded to our 4 bet. He quickly 3 bets to $50 and it folds to me. Considering literally just a couple hands ago I 4 bet shoved on him and showed ace king to the table, I'm going to play this one a little tricky as most of his range is probably going to fold to a 4 bet shove again. I must reiterate that thus, this is a low frequency play, most of the time this is just a mandatory 4 bet, it's just because of the table dynamics that I'm making this play at this moment. The flop is action packed, coming ace king queen rainbow. We flop our set and it's super disguised, there's almost no universe where he puts me on a set. He's had a bad day, I don't think he'd be 3 betting jack 10 at this late stage of the session, especially with only 300 to start the hand. Therefore, when he checks to me, I decide to slow play, hoping he bets turn, knowing that this board texture smashes his range, even though he may not have a hand. The turn comes the four of diamonds, very safe, but unfortunately he checks it to me once again. I need to start betting now, so I bet 45. This is when something weird happens, when he basically min raises it up to $100. This isn't Mr. Min raise, this is the tanker, maybe they decided to swap names for a hand, I don't really know. At this point in time, it was a huge decision for me, I actually tanked for a while myself because I didn't know whether to call or shove. 
he had like 40 behind, but if he was bluffing, I'd lose that 40, so I wanted to make sure it was guaranteed that the money was going in. To be honest, my kind of thinking was pretty dumb, I should have just shoved, because if he was drawing, he'd call, and if he missed on the river, he'd just fold and I'd lose $40 of value. I do only call, however, and we're off to a river. The river comes the nine of diamonds, really bad card as he could have a flush, but I'm not gonna not put the $40 in, so when he shoves, I call and wow. This player has been on a poor run of form recently, although he's a pretty good player, and when he flips over ace king, I just feel bad. To be fair, he would've called a four bet pre-flop, but him flopping top two pair and me flopping a set is just another huge cooler. We end the day on a high note, taking down a pot of almost $450. We end up sitting with a stack of just under $1,500 when the game breaks, so yeah, a great day for us. Hope you enjoyed the video guys, we got into some massive spots pre-flop, it was quite tough. I think we ended the session with a stack of $1,475, we bought in for $300, meaning we made a profit of $1,175, which was a very good session for us. If you did enjoy, please remember to subscribe, it really helps the channel out, and yeah, peace.